boy, is today a good day to be reflecting <laughs> and on reflections. It's amazing how we as human beings in response to life in general that we're existing in, as we go through our day or we go through our week or month or year, that we respond differently on different days than we might think we would if we were planning ahead of time. A lot of people assume somehow that every day is going to be the same or that every day is going to be up or if they're in a major depression every day is going to be down. When in reality life itself is ups and downs and all arounds and lefts and rights and inside outs and outside ins. And that's kind of what it's like with knowing God and having God intimate and personal. Because a lot of people, bottom line is, they don't have a real God. They may have real faith, but when I say that God is personal and real, I mean He, as an individual, not only contacts me and responds to me, but He initiates that contact lots of times, or creates that bond between us. He opens the door, as it were, and lets me in to know Him in a personal and intimate way. And and sometimes I need that, you know. I mean, most of the time, you know, I, I'm like anybody else, you know. I'll take God for granted or take my faith for granted and, you know, believe in Jesus and believe in the salvation that God has provided through His Son and all the other happy religious, you know, Christmas trimmings that people use, peace, love, joy, and all that stuff, and the fruit of the Spirit, and, the, you know, and their exhaustive studies of the Bible and everything else. But that don't cut the mustard. I'm sorry, but that sooner or later you'll find that if you're just existing on a level of intellectualism or humanism where your only response to God is in a Bible or in a church or in a worship service, you won't make it. You really won't. I'm telling you as a Jesus freak, I mean, I've had more experiences than most people in their life. And even now, it's hard. I mean, we live in the latter days. We live in the last times. We live in the time that was spoken of as the days being evil. And it's increasing, not lessening. So when I consider, you know, reflecting on some of the things that either, oh, I don't know, I wanted to do, I'd like to do, or I, I have, you know, feelings about in response to some input from someone else or something else. You know, I'm amazed, I guess blessed would be the word, but I'm overwhelmed by the tenderness of God, the sensitivity that God has towards me in my life that I know that I'll be saved because I will always be, regardless of sin or righteousness, irrespective of people, places or things, health or wealth, poverty or disease. I can't connect anything in this world with how unique and intimate, how tender and how special the Father, God, can be when He chooses to be. And, you know, I, I kind of went through a major downer yesterday and, and um, well, last couple, I've been, I'm kind of on a downer ever since probably, you know, the kayak, but um, I've been in pain with my shoulders for quite a while now. So, now I'm here, you know, on a day when it's thundering and lightning, which really makes you kind of like think of God. I don't know about you, how much time? Oh, we got plenty of time. I don't know about you, but I always think of God with thunder and lightning. <laughs> it's just, it's one of those Odin things, you know? you know. But no, I mean, I know God doesn't exist in the thunder and lightning. I mean, he really is in the, the calm afterwards or the stillness. But people don't get it that there's more to your world than you can see, hear, touch, or feel, or experience in your emotions. And worship is a nice 
taste, but it's not the reality of God himself. Um, I really would, you know, be on a real downer. I mean, and I'm still on a downer, but I mean a real downer. But were it not for God, you know, talking to me and, and, and enveloping me in what he just simply, you know, kind of went, well, you know, you could, you can have whatever you want. You know, I mean, it's really weird when God does something like that because, you know, you kind of, man, you know, your first thoughts are like, wow, you know, get this person saved or something, you know, and then you kind of go, well, that's kind of corny, you know, you know, it sounds spiritual. And then, you know, you kind of go through all this, well, can I have money? Can I have this? Can I have that? You know, and I, I really don't flesh out in that way anymore. I mean, I might have maybe way back when, I don't know, kill him, God, you know, or revenge or whatever it may be. But I've asked for those, not when God gave me whatever I wanted, but rather, you know, at times where I'm frustrated or angry or mad. Go get him, God, you know. You're supposed to be my defense, so you take care of it. And he does. I take that as an automatic in my faith, in my walk with God. But what's amazing to me is what I really want isn't, you know, like, you know, my wife, children, grandchildren, friends, neighbors, relatives. I don't want that. You know, I, I feel humbled. I mean, today I feel crushed by tenderness, by sensitivity. Because I told her, I want him. I don't want, you know, whatever I can have. I want what I can't have. And that's God. You know, I mean, He made me. And I know that I exist with a, a huge, huge, huge heart that's really... When I got saved, I was desperately looking for love. You know, and, and I mean, family wasn't it. You know, just didn't cut it. And God filled it. Overwhelming. And then... Because he did, he said, you know, he chose me for a specific reason and purpose, you know. And, and it's been a long lifetime of, of, you know, being used by him for that purpose. But now it's more like he just loves me. And, um, you know, you, you think like Paul, you know, um, I've run the race, I've finished the course, you know. And... You look around and you say, but what What did you do? Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe I didn't do a lot, but recorded a few videos. You know, maybe some people saw something good in it. Maybe they didn't. You know, talked about Jesus whenever I could. And then later on in life, kind of like, that kind of slowed down and slowed down like all the other Jesus freaks out there. They're no longer talking about Jesus. They talk about religion and church and, you know, abortion and, all the worldly things, you know, or they're going through their Bible study routine. Every year we're here in the same spot. Every three years we're through this. Every five years we do this. Why isn't anyone talking about God anymore? I mean, I can't say anyone because I, you know, if God sends me somebody, you know, that <laughs> has a similar experience or similar feelings, I don't know. You know, I read it and I go, they get it, you know. And uh, I like that because reflecting on my life, you know, I can't say that, you know, anybody's going to say, hey, I want to be like him. <laughs> Ain't no way, Jack. You know, I've been disabled. I mean, really what God did was when he gave me Crohn's disease, I knew at that time that I was going to be a testimony or a witness by my life, of what God can do in a life. Not not by being perfect or being, you know, like, oh, look at this, this is how it works. No, by being messed up and being weak and being humble and being poor and being, you know, all these other things, but being 
lifted up or being sustained by God himself, personally. And that, either to angels or to people, would be the witness that I would become. Now, it kind of left me way out in left field with a lot of people. You know, I mean, I still get people that come up to me and tell me, I, you know, you're such a meanie, you're such a... You. Ask God. You know, I mean, I, at first I was so innocent about telling people, well, you know, if you've got a problem with me, go talk to Jesus. He'll, he'll straighten me out or he'll tell me or whatever. Now I'm more like belligerent about it. It's more like, hey, you know what? I didn't do this. A lot of what goes on, nine times I say, I haven't a clue. It's like, well, you know, maybe I'm supposed to be this way for this person, you know. You know, I walk out in the street and tell people to slow down their car. You know, because they are racing 60 mile an hour in 25 mile an hour zone and I look down the street and I see kids. It automatic response, autonomous response. I just walk out there and tell them, no, slow down. You know, and I did that for quite a while since I moved into this location. And built a reputation. Now I'm this crazy old guy, you know. Now my wife's disgusted with me because, you know, different times people called cops on me. You know, it's like, cops just kind of, they chuckle a little bit. They don't want to admit it, but they chuckle and they're like, well, well, you know, <laughs> at least he's not weirdo, like, you know, shooting people or, you know, doing other things that some of the modern society is doing nowadays, you know, blowing people up, shooting them, fighting, whatever. No, I work on my garden, you know. Talk to God and try to, you know, live a life that is waiting for him to come back. You know? I mean, I'd love for you, whoever you are, you know, really to make it. I doubt it, but, you know, I hope you do. You know, I really do. I hope you figure out that, you know, it's not up to me or the church or Jesus or anybody else. It's up to you. You know, and if you don't do something about it, you'll go to hell. I mean, yeah, that's no brainer. But after that, if you've really chosen to, then, you know, great. Leave us out of it. You know, leave me out of it. You know, I don't want to stand next to you. You know, I don't have to be shining example of Jesus. Jesus is the shining example of Jesus. I'm sorry. That's the way it works. You know, and sure, at one time, walking in the Spirit, you know, at some portion of my lifetime, sure, you would have said, wow, he glows. You know? <laughs> but that's God. That's not me. You know, inside of me going, ooh, this is kind of cool in here. I feel like I'm inside of a spaceship, you know, the spaceship Jesus, you know. And outside is glowing, and I'm on the inside looking around going, ooh, look at all the bright, shiny things, so to speak. But I think in reflecting on a life that's lived, all I can do is live it. You know, I mean, I can't be what people want me to be. I can't do what people want me to do. I can be what God has made me to be. I can exist as God has allowed me to. And I can be forgiven as God forgives. And as God has mercy. You know, I mean, the old timers used to know that better than we do nowadays. Because to, nowadays, with the days being evil, people are going out and doing their own thing. They aren't. I mean, I'm not even just talking about sinners or cultists or people in false religions or whatever they're into. I mean, sometimes the false religions are more righteous than the Christians are, or the Messianics, or whoever, Jews. But all I can do is, and I don't mean work out my salvation, because God does that part, but all I can do is just simply observe and watch, wait and be ready. Be still and have at moments, I'm not going to say every day is the same, but at moments have that, ooh, intimacy of of a tenderness that goes beyond anything beyond sex beyond orgasm beyond you know carnality beyond spirituality but is all encompassing when you finally get beyond Jesus even into the reality of a existential being inside of you that God is and he reveals himself to you and you just go Oh. And then you've got nothing to say. You've got nothing to do. Matter of fact, you've got nothing to live for you because you want to get on an eternity. You'd rather be living with God in His place than God being down here in your place. And I guess that's where I'm leaving it at. 
Wouldn't you rather be?